Yeah. Okay. I went back and I started going through. Uh, did you guys see the, final, the last episode that just came out, Sales Funnel Radio? Was it the first 17 tries one yet? Maybe that's next week. <laughs> well, that's what it is. Oops. <laughs> okay. Um, I went through and I started listing out. I thought it was 17 tries. It was 17 tries for me before I found out what a funnel was. <laughs> okay. And it was another 17 while at ClickFunnels. And the difference between these two is these are making no money. Then I got to ClickFunnels and they at least started making money, but not like nothing to write home about, right? Um, and it wasn't until that 35th shot when I finally left ClickFunnels that things started really exploding. Because um, I started noticing patterns while doing Russell's coaching program. And I was like, man, I feel like there's another part to this. And the part is campaigns. And the part is the offer, the way I'm going to teach you guys right here. And then stuff started blowing up. How many guys uh, have tried this for more than two years? Right? Ten? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah that's just good, right? And, and a whole bunch in between. How many of you guys are still trying to get the first, I call it the shut up check. You guys ever heard the shut up check? Okay. And anyone have like, you guys are in that phase where you've done enough tries that loved ones are like, is this the one that's gonna work? Is this the one? Right, the shut up check. It's like, yeah, and it did, baby. Whoa, shut up, right? It's the shut up check. Don't say that to your loved one, but like, <laughs> But uh, uh, that's what I was like craving though when a lot of my friends in the army uh, would ask me like, oh, Larson's gonna go be the millionaire, what's up? And I'm like, yeah, what's up, son? I'm not yet, but I will be, what's up, right? And uh, it was the shut up check that I was craving. That first validating experience where I was like, man, you know, I really, really, I know this can work, why isn't it, right? And, uh, and it took five years and it's terrible, it sucked, it was, it was awful. And I remember, having some pretty hard conversations with myself. Have you guys ever asked, why am I still broke? Right? Riding my bike home from, cool, from campus, coming back to our little apartment. And I started asking myself, like, dude, why are you still broke? And I was riding my bike just judging businesses. Like, I know what I'd do if I was in that business. On the squeaky, <laughs> you know what I mean? The squeaky judgmental bike that was broke. Going back, oh, I know what I'd do over there. Right? And then so I started having this conversation though. I was like, why am I still broke? If I know, like, put your money where your mouth is. I realized on that bike ride home, there wasn't even a place on the internet you could accidentally pay me, <laughs> right? I had nothing up. There was nothing. Like, you couldn't like mistakenly send me money, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not making any offers. And then Frank Kern, uh, in fact, he just had a really cool quote he just dropped out. He said, you will find that the amount of money you make is... Um, there's a lot of things that's contingent on, but one of them is just how many offers you make. Russell, uh, he screenshotted something and sent it to me two months ago. And he goes, did you know that Agora last year, one division of Agora, you guys know Agora, big, massive, billion dollar financial newsletter. Last year, one division tested 200 offers. 200 offers, one division. How many offers have you made last year? Okay, think about that. Just fire, just launch. So this stuff that you're going and creating, don't wait for it to be perfect and then don't get too scientific about it. I believe in the science and I believe in the art of it, but the science of it is what you need to make money. The science of it, the one plus two plus three plus four, right? That's the thing that you need to make sure that you understand. The art of it comes later. Don't worry about that part of it. It won't make, won't make you money for a while. But uh, just do the bare bones and get it out there, okay? <clears throat> no, no, you're forward. <laughs> okay. I was firing myself and I put down all my books and I stopped actively learning and I was like, how can I just execute? Um, the biggest thing that I had to change about me was uh, just money beliefs. How many of you guys have realized you had uh, some money beliefs you had to overcome, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. Right, all of us, all of us go through it. And what I was really afraid of being is a rich jerk. Anyone else ever had that one? How is it going to change me if I start making money? It's a real fear. That's a big fear. I don't know if you, guys, you can identify with it, but that was one of the biggest things. I was like, man, I don't want to make a whole bunch of money. What if I become one of those rich snobs or whatever? And then I realized that there are poor snobs. <laughs> <laughs> and I was more of a jerk when I was scraping for every dollar. Okay. And then I also realized like, wait a second, there are rich, cool people. And I was like, oh, super cool. So I don't have to be a jerk. Money isn't what changes me. Money is what magnifies me, okay? Because there's also really poor, cool people, right? So this has nothing to do with it. 
And this is one of the biggest false beliefs I had to shed and get rid of, is that it would go and it would take me, it would take me against my will, change me, turn me into something that I don't want to be. And then I realized, oh my gosh, money's just an amplifier. It's just going to make me more of who I am. So if I am a jerk and I'm an idiot and I'm a snob and I run over people and I'm not charitable when I'm poor because it does, I have nothing to do with money, I will just be more of that when I'm rich, <laughs> right? The exact same thing is true if I'm like, oh man, I'm going to go try and be charitable and I'm going to help and I'm going to serve and I'm going to make that part of my core, then money's just going to magnify me and I can be more of that. Make sense? Okay. <laughs> This is what the capitalist pig thing is. I've had to explain this several times. I was speaking at Carnegie Hall. Martha Stewart was there. It was really cool. And uh, um, <laughs> we had a lot. We had a, it was a, a crowd from the internet that is not, they don't know our crowd of the internet. <laughs> so they saw, we were walking through New York with our capitalist pig shirts on, which is very fun. New, Manhattan? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was good. It was... Um, I'm not trying to be rude here, but right, right. There was like, people were like, oh my gosh, I love that shirt. Where do you get it? All the way to you're the scum of the earth. You're terrible, but they're mostly hippies and wouldn't do anything about it anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> just saying, but I wanted to explain what I mean by this. Okay. I had to break a lot of false beliefs around this. I don't want the government to take care of me, even if I need it. That's what it means to me. I, uh, I believe that real change comes from the private sector, not government. I'm not anti-government. Okay. But I believe I can do more with more money. Money is just a tool, right, to increase my speed and my growth. And I know the pursuit of profit requires my personal development. And that's the reason I love the entrepreneur game so much. I've changed rapidly, absurdly fast. I feel like, um, you guys know Alex Sharfin? I sent him a message um, about a month ago and I was like, the ground is constantly moving beneath my feet, man. It's like, I'm always, uh, you guys see the movie Shrek? Like ogres or onions, right? I, I keep thinking like I got all these onion layers that are constantly peeling off. Stuff is shifting. You guys know what I'm talking about? How many of you guys have felt that? Stuff is moving so fast in me. I, real fast, I'm getting down to the core of who I really am because all the other stuff is flaking out, right? You guys know what I'm talking about? That's why I love this game. It's not about, um, um, I go to counseling every Monday at 10 a.m., <laughs> Last week, the guy was like, so what's the, why do you keep doing this? He actually used the word pursuit, which I loved. That's the name of my company, if you don't know, Pursuit of Profit. Um, and um, he goes, why do you keep doing it? If it's, he's like, are you taking care of it? I was like, oh yeah. He's like, how long could you last? It's like the business has four months worth of business costs at all times. So if we made no money for four months, we'd still be in business. And then I was like, we got 12 months of cost savings and personally. I was like, we, he's like, so why do you keep going? It's like the love of the game. It's so fun. Are you guys having the fun part of the entrepreneurial experience yet? Who, who is, yeah? How many of you are waiting for it? And that's okay too. Seriously, because it's terrible for a little bit, right? And that's why I love it so much. The personal growth, the development piece of it is like, oh, it's so choice. This is like the best personal development course you never enrolled in, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, it's going to take you. And if you let it and you give yourself up to it, and let it start to change you and you start to behave and do things you wouldn't normally do and your behaviors change faster than you would change them. It's very fascinating and that's why I love the game so much. Okay. Um, <laughs> There's a guy that drew this and just sent it and, um, and he drew one of myself as well but I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't quite appreciate my depiction as much. <laughs> <laughs> or the quote, it's all about intent, baby. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but uh, you guys are going to make great friends along the way in this, and uh, it's not a one-person sport. Um, it is contingent on your personal growth, but uh, it's not, you can't do it alone. I've never seen anyone make a million bucks on their own. It doesn't happen. It takes a team, it takes people around, it takes a support group. Um, we've, uh, we've got, I got myself an amazing team. Let's give it up for, uh, for Austin and <laughs> Colton. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, John just joined our team like literally three days ago, which is awesome. His video, Woo! right? Super cool. Um, but uh, it's uh, super fun. This is, a, this is a really cool journey for, for everybody else. How many of you guys have a team? Nice. It's awesome. If your hand's not up, just understand that you are going to be stopped very quickly. And um, I don't want to believe that. In 2016, I started uh, learning how other teams work. 
right? And I went, I started working for the man and I was on business try like 12-ish and everything was sucking. <laughs> and I had made enough money for other companies that he was like, oh, you're a good funnel builder. And it, stuff was working. I don't want to make it seem like nothing wasn't. But I mean, stuff was working. Um, but I believe the success was based on the funnel. And what he turned me into is I was a funnel builder. He sent me this Vox one day and he goes, dude, you're a great funnel builder. It's awesome. And I was like, yeah, so cool. What he was training me to become was a marketer. And I thought that was the same thing. And it is not. Okay. Um, I could barely feed the family still for, for a while when I showed up. Totally broke. Uh, showed up to his event in 2016. Got to work around some pretty epic people. We did some great projects with others. 2017, he really became my mentor. <laughs> and... Um, <coughs> Started turning me into a marketer, like I said. We built hundreds of funnels. We did a lot of cool things. Um, oh, trained to become a marketer. Um, and I started getting the itch to get out on my own. And um, it was a very hate mail inducing decision. <laughs> okay. Uh, a lot of people said, like, hey, why are you doing that? That's dumb. Do you know who you're working for? And I'm like, yes, but I'm an entrepreneur, right? <laughs> I got to get out there. And, um, uh, and I'd been doing it long enough to see what patterns were actually causing money. And I was like eager to go get it out there. Actually, I'll talk about that a little bit more this afternoon on what really hap uh, happened and why, why I had to leave um, uh, to walk through it. So I left and I was like, hey, I'm going to go get my first two comic club award. In fact, I, I asked Russell. Uh, it's the final thing. And uh, I think I recorded it. I'll have to go find it. I'm walking out, packed up my desk, and I started walking out. And, you know, it's in the same room. So he's like, good luck, man. Any final things? Or what's, what's your goal? I said, two comic club. And he goes, he said, it's not as hard as you think. I was like, all right, bro. <laughs> you got two comic club awards of your own lying in your ceiling. Like, it's easy for you to say. How many of you guys ever thought that when you see someone else to say that, right? It's easy for you to do, right? And um, that was my initial knee-jerk internal, right? I did not say that, right? <laughs> but I was like, all right, man. You got three two comic club X awards, Besides ClickFunnels, at that time he had 18 other two Comic Club awards for this other like knee-jerk reaction products we would put together. He'd be like, 2 a.m., dude, we're launching at 3 p.m. Like, hey, we haven't started. I know, you got to get going. He'd be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> right? And start <laughs> like, building, put all the things together. And so it was interesting for him to say that. Um, so my goal, though, was to go, I knew it was possible. I had helped him make Many millions, right? And, but, uh, but he was the marketer and I was the funnel builder. Very different roles. And I'm starting to understand that. Um, and so in 2019, it was 13 months after I left. That's when we crossed the first million. And I was like, I get it. I get it. Okay. Seven months later was the next. And then we had our first million dollar day. And uh, we've only been gone for two years and we're about to cross five million. And um, which is crazy. And please don't, don't like, thank you. That's nice of you. <clears throat> I just want to say that so you guys understand how fast the game can take you once you get it. Two years? I haven't been graduated for four. Okay? And that's what I want to help you see with this. This is all a pattern. I don't believe in the art part of it. I believe in the science part of it. One plus one is two. Okay? And that's what we're going to walk through with you guys uh, uh, for this whole thing.